Hello and welcome back to the Roman Cinema Podcast. My name is Emma. And my name is Wyatt. And today we are going to be talking about The Bad Guys. We just got done watching The Bad Guys. Um, so right off the bat, what did you think? Um, I actually really liked it. I, I, I'm like genuinely surprised by how much I enjoyed the movie. I also really enjoyed it. I thought it was really fun and very action packed. So to give you a little understanding about what the movie is all about, I'm going to read a synopsis for you. So after a lifetime of pulling legendary heists, five notorious bad guys, Mr. Wolf, Mr. Snake, Mr. Piranha, Mr. Shark, and Miss Tarantula attempt their most challenging job yet, going good. Nobody has ever failed so hard at trying to be the bad guys. An all-new animated f- feature film from DreamWorks Animation. Based on the best-selling Scholastic Blockbuster book series by Aaron Babley, which has more than 8.2 million copies in print worldwide. So, yes, I thought it was really great. Um, I think it had fun music. It was very action-packed. The characters were funny, and it just had a lot of really fun jokes for kids and adults alike, I thought. I'm glad you brought that up because I thought, yeah, the adult joke, I think it's, I personally think it's almost a bit of a cop out to look at an animated movie or like a kids movie and say, like, oh, you know, it's got adult jokes in it too. Because I personally thought that not a lot of it was adult jokes, but it's almost like adult just references and just small nods to things that the kids aren't gonna, you know, know what that is. If an adult is watching with their kids, they're gonna pick that out and say, oh, that's neat. Like one thing I noticed was that the whole movie kind of felt like an animated Tarantino film, but. One thing that really got me is that one of the characters at one point is wearing a reverse Kill Bill suit, the suit that Uma Thurman wears in Kill Bill. It's the inverse of that. And I, lo- I looked at that and I'm like, wow, they're really, like, they're really going all in on that. I thought there was some great references to adult franchises. And so I thought that was, it was just really clever. And it, it doesn't do it in the normal way of putting like innuendos in, but it's rather just references to, and nods to stuff that the kids aren't going to know. Yeah, definitely. And actually similar to that the Washington Post article by Kristen Page Kirby said much of the bad guys is a nod and a wink and a nudge to Ocean's Eleven down to the storytelling visual style and some of the very specific jokes Wolf puts the moves on a female fox by going full Clooney so um, you're not the only one that thinks that the movie was giving a nod to some more adult franchises that's a great way to put it yeah I, I noticed those things I I had read that review prior, so I was kind of looking out for it. Yeah, and then, so, basically, overall, the film addresses an intriguing question, why are the bad guys bad? And this is also from the Washington Post article. Um, She says, they have no choice according to Wolf. Still, as a wolf learns more about the benefits of being good, he kind of likes it. That opens a rupture between him and his longtime accomplices, and eventually he'll have to make a choice. And I thought it had a really great message. I, you know, it did talk about, like, the snake talked about how, you know, no matter what, snakes aren't going to be liked and stuff. So it's an interesting take on stereotypes and that all all that kind of message while yeah. staying relevant and in entertaining. Yeah, I very much agree with that and that's and that's why, you know, the the book franchise has succeeded as long as it has. It's been running for a while uh, because I think it takes that very simple message that not everything is as it seems and it, you know, it can build comedy, it can build an intriguing story off of that, but I think the overall very positive message uh, stays the same. And uh, yeah, I think I think it's uh, just a wonderful premise to build a kids movie off of because if there's anybody that needs to know it, it's kids that might not know it yet. And sure, there's some adults that might need to know it too. But but you know, you start them young. <laughs> right. And um, a review from Common Sense Media kind of plays off of what you just said. So Tara says, over the course of a, the story, the characters learn that being good means putting others' needs before your own, and that the positive recognition may follow good deeds. A subplot about sharing is as clear and shiny as a diamond. So I think it does, it has a lot of good messages for kids while putting it in a way that doesn't feel like they're being lectured. And yeah, it's just a good, it's a good story about bad guys becoming good. Yeah, and it definitely delivered a memorable message about the harmful impact of stereotypes. Yes, I, yeah, story-wise, I was very pleasantly surprised because I, 
think in a lot of kids movies you almost like like it gets predictable to a point where it's like you know you know what's going to happen before the characters do and before the kids do but even though this one might have been predictable in that same sense i still felt engrossed in the story and like i was never like scoffing at a writing decision like never looked at and said like oh well that's just you know that's you know that's too easy that's simple or whatever because they it was always backed up and and even in the times where it's like oh is that a little too easy there's always at least a decent punchline to follow it and so the writing was just was just wonderful it takes yeah like, i mean you know a, a well established book series and it, it takes that story and translates it to the big screen i know i you know i was looking it's not it doesn't exactly match up with the books there's there's some differences but they establish a lot of characters right off the bat, and I do think they are moving towards a potential sequel. There's the ending that, that you know, keeps you wanting a little bit more, and, and you can tell it's one of those kids' movie endings that makes the kids go, oh, there's going to be a second one now, and so the kids will have that in the back of their mind. I thought it was a clever way to set it up. Yeah, and even though it was slightly predictable, there also were portions of it that were a shock kind of to the storyline. So I think there are a couple twists and turns that are fun. Yeah, so again, The Bad Guys is directed by... Pierre Parafel. It's his directorial debut as Yes, well. he was the animator of the Kung Fu Panda films. Um, and this movie is rated PG, um, and it runs for 100 minutes. So any other last thoughts about that? Um, I love the art. I love the animation. Oh, I was mesmerized even in like the opening scenes. Uh, they open in a diner. Uh, which, again, just a wonderful nod to Tarantino and everything uh, he's contributed to the film world, I think. I can tell that the people behind this movie are, like, fil film nerds because just there's nods to so many things. Ocean's Eleven, like you said, and I see a lot of, like, Kill Bill. I see a lot of just, you know, Pulp Fiction, just a lot of Tarantino in this. Um, the art style was great. One thing I noticed, and going back to that, like, adult references thing, and I don't know if I'm the only person that might see this, but the way the city is set up and the way the city is drawn, and there's there's certain parts where it looks like it's a nod to Grand Theft Auto, the video game. I don't know. I just picked that up right away because, yeah, there's this this area underneath the bridge that they're at, and I'm, oh, that looks like something straight out of the game. And so I thought that was really clever, and I thought, yeah, the art style went well. It was... It was just it was very it was very pleasing to look at and there's a lot of references and things I picked up on that I was like, Oh, that's that's cool. They yeah. like they like movies. Yeah, I agree. The animation was really fun. It was really well done. It was just it was just very entertaining. So now we're gonna move on to what else is playing at Roman cinema. So The North Man premiered tonight, which Thursday night as we're recording this. So this movie is from visionary director Robert Eggers. Comes the Northman, an action filled epic that follows a young Viking prince on his quest to avenge his father's murder. So this movie is definitely more intense. It is rated R and it runs for 137 minutes. It has an all-star cast and I think it's going to do pretty well because it's there's been a lot of hype that I've seen around it. Yeah, and in terms of movies that are out right now, there's not a whole lot that's like geared solely at an adult audience like I mean, with Fantastic Beasts, you know, like, it, it stems from Harry Potter, a young adult, or, you know, like, even younger uh, franchise. You know, we have Sonic. We've got, you know, the bad guys, obviously. So there's not a whole lot that's geared with that sort of mindset. And so I think I think it'll, it'll hit that market. And, uh, I mean, yeah. So it's, yeah, so it's going to have some stuff about masculinity and the toxicity of it. Um, but also heavy and violence and... Yeah. See, it'll, Gore. It'll a, a more a more serious movie than the bad guys to say the least definitely uh, not one for the kids but and then the other movie coming is the unbearable weight of massive talent so nicholas cage stars as nicholas cage in the action comedy the unbearable weight of massive talent creatively unfulfilled and facing financial ruin the fictionalized version of cage must accept a one million offer to attend the birthday of a super fan when things take a wildly dangerous dangerous turn cage is forced to live up to his own legend channeling his most iconic and beloved on-screen characters in order to save himself and his loved ones with a career built for this very moment the academy award-winning icon actor iconic actor must take the role of a lifetime himself 
So I know that you're very excited for this one. I love Nicolas Cage. I love Nicolas Cage. I think, I mean, he's he's an enigma in uh, in in pop culture because it's like there's been like a certain shift. Like for a while, it was always about like how bad the movies Nicolas Cage were in are, or like you know, like maybe like people calling him a bad actor or whatever. But like when you look back on it, it's like. He was really just he was just acting like he took the roles that he could and he made them his own, you know. And so I really think that he has had like a wonderful career. And I think that being memorable is more important uh, to, to him and, and to a lot of people like being memorable And being a memorable actor is more important than being what is considered a good actor by a lot of people. And I think this movie really proves that because it's like there's all these nods to what Nicolas Cage has done prior in his career. And it's like it's just like a love letter to him and to the type of movies that he uh, makes, like in the same sense that like. We were just talking about the bad guys, so almost like a love letter to Tarantino. There's this different sect of film that is getting shown appreciation in this uh, massive talent that I think is super cool because, you know, f- film can be an art form, but at at a base level, it's entertainment as well. And I think what Nicolas Cage has done is entertain people throughout his career. This movie is a love letter to that, and I think... I think, you know, if you really want to analyze it, I think it's a beautiful thing. But if you don't want to analyze it as much, you can look at it as Nicolas Cage plays Nicolas Cage. Isn't that funny? Yeah. The Seattle Times re- Review by Scott Greenstone says, this is why we love Nicolas Cage. No matter what movie he's in, he doesn't pretend he's better than the material or the moviegoers. He just loves the movies and he's always game and doesn't treat the movie like it's part of a lifetime. Like it's the part of a lifetime. You a big Nicolas Cage fan? Um, I, to be honest, I have not a clue who he is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, but, um, this movie does look really great. I mean, I've seen the trailers and the promotions for it. So Pedro Pascal um, looks amazing in it. I think he is, uh, known as known for his role in the Mandalorian as, um, the Mandalorian. I uh, loved that. I love, I love Pedro Pascal as well. I think it's a, I think it's a great cast for this movie. So yeah. And this movie is rated R and it's 107 minutes. So the other movies showing this weekend is Our Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore, which we talked about last week. That is PG-13 and 142 minutes. And Sonic the Hedgehog is also playing, um, which is PG. And The Lost City is also still playing this weekend. So PG-13 for that one. So, yeah, any final thoughts? Um, my final thoughts, um, haven't had a chance to see Sonic, but you know, if you're, uh, if the kiddos are getting a a little anxious, you want to get out of the house. I think bad guys is a wonderful film, uh, to go and see. It will keep you and whoever you are seeing it with entertained at the very least. And that's really what you want from a movie of this type. Mm. Yep. Definitely. The bad guys is great for the whole family. It's a really fun activity for this weekend. Um, might be raining here on Saturday, so That'd be a good time to come. Yeah, so thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next week.